Robert, great to see you. I know you're well used to these big fights at this stage, these big events, but this is a massive one, isn't it? It is, you know. First of all, thanks, thanks for having me. You know, it's great being here. Uh, it is, you know, it, it is uh, probably the biggest event, you know, and, and, and not to take anything away from former champions that I've worked with or, or fighters that we've gone against, you know, like a Mayweather or a Manny Pacquiao, but this event is just special, you know, especially for me, you know, it's, it's, it's the heavyweight championship, champion of the world, championship of the world, you know, that's not very few, Don't you get know, much bigger. not every trainer could say that, you know what I mean? Mm. It's, it's a great event and I'm, I'm very happy to, to be part of it. I mean, I clearly remember your career very well myself, but for the more casual audience in the UK, tell us about your achievements as a fighter. Well, you know, I uh, I fought professionally for nine years. I started at 17 and and uh, and retired at 26. So I was I was still young, but you know, became champion of the world uh, at the age of 23. Defended my title a couple of times. Lost my my title to the great uh, Chico Corrales, mm -hmm. which uh, I actually now you know, 20 plus years after, I'm actually proud to say that I, I lost to somebody like Chico Corrales, you know. He came to, be lo to become one of the greats in boxing, probably, if not the best, but one of the fa best, one of the better fights out there that we've ever seen against uh, Castillo. So I'm, I'm proud, you know, to, to say that I lost my title to Chico Corrales. And, you know, I came, you know, went along to fight again for the title one more time, which I lost again to, uh, to uh, Casamayor. Casamayor, there you go. Uh, he was an Olympic gold medalist, uh, and he also beat me. Then I, one fight after that is when I retired. You know, I just got tired of the sport. Mm. Uh, it's tough. It's a tough yeah. business, you know, especially when you're you're the one doing it. You're you're the one sparring. You're the one dieting every day. You're going to camp. It's not easy, you know. That's why it takes a lot of sacrifice. And those, all those that do it, gotta respect them. Yeah, for sure. Uh, obviously, you're from a fighting family. Your father trained you, and of course, you played a big role in Mikey's career. Correct. Uh, the experience and the wisdom that you got from your own career, did that help you? Obviously, that's helped you uh, massively in terms of what you can bring to the table with the younger, with these younger fighters that you are training. You know what? I think that's the most important thing uh, when when uh, when a fighter is in the ring, it's just in, in, in the gym training, and uh, and I went through it, you know. And even though my father was my trainer, and my father is a great trainer he, he's got a lot of knowledge in boxing but he didn't he didn't fight professionally he never went 10 or 12 rounds you know to know how a boxer feels you know so so I know when my fighter in the gym if I'm asking him you know if the plan is to do 12 rounds but maybe he had a, a bad night sleeping or you know just something is, is wrong with him I, I could see it so yeah. I'll just say we're not, you know, instead of 12, we're just gonna do six or, you know, we'll go half and then we'll, do, we'll find another day to, to do those 12 rounds because I know how it is, it's, it's tough, especially when, when you're already closer to the fight. There's a lot of nights where, where fighters don't sleep because they're, you know, they're just going through the fight over and over. Cutting weight is also a, a, big, uh, a big fact that uh, fighters have trouble sleeping because sometimes, you know, they go to bed a little hungry because, mm -hmm. you know, we gotta cut weight. So all that, I lived it. So I think that helps me. Uh, that's helped me become the trainer that I, that I, you know, the things that I've accomplished. You had a lot of success with uh, Marcus Madonna. You know, we've we, we seen work with you in the gym with him and you really refined him and tactically you added a lot to him. Uh, is that some of the work that you're probably most proud of? Madonna with you the main other fights, etc. I, I, I do believe so because uh, you know, when, when Madonna came to me, he had just lost the fight uh, to Devin Alexander, I believe, and his manager told me, you know what, uh, Madonna wants to retire, but he still has a lot left, and we need to bring him to a new team. So when we first brought him in, Madonna didn't really want to be there, but little by little, he started getting used to making friends with you know everybody else in the gym, started started uh, liking it, and uh, you know, and you know, we did our job, but he also did his. You know, he he listened, and uh, he. He want, you know, once he found the hunger again, he uh, paid attention and uh, and did what he was told. And you know, the results were there. You know, he had a great win against Adrian Bonner, and then and then the, those those two fights against uh, Mayweather. You know, if we wouldn't have had two if if the first fight wasn't so close, or you know, a lot of people thought we won. You know, so it, it was just one of those uh, fights where yeah, it makes me 
proud of what, what I did with him, you know, coming from his last, you know, when he came to me, coming off a loss and not wanting to fight anymore. So I think we did a lot of, you know, big together. Do you think that AJ's looked at that success how you, that you had with Madonna at that stage of his career and how you were able to sort of reinvent him? Do you think that might have been something he well, looked at when he came to you? You know what, I think that's something that, uh, that that's a question he has to answer. You know, that's not, you know, the, the, what I think, or that's not what I want to think, but have I been chosen for that before? Yes. Uh, I could go on with the list of fighters that have, uh, you know, that have already been towards the end of their careers, but then they come to me and I kind of bring them back to, to, uh, to good wins, good fights, some have even became champions after they thought everybody thought they were they were finished, you know. But I do like to I do like those challenges, you know. When um, when we first met last uh, last October in in California, you know, once I, I met the whole team, I'm, I talked to Anthony, I I was crossing fingers, you know, so they could pick me. I know they they still went to different trainers and uh, and uh, different. Uh, uh, teams to try to see which one fits the best, but I, I really wanted to because I, I wanted that challenge. I, you know, I know after his uh, his loss, everybody pretty pretty much gave up on him, especially the media, uh, boxing fans. Uh, once again, a lot of people told me, you know, he's uh, you know he's done already. You know, his his mind, his heart is not there anymore. But I, you know, I I, I wanted to take the challenge. You know, I, they flew me down in De in December. First time I was I was I spent ten days with him and uh, and I I seen that you know he's he's got unbelievable skills you know his skills his uh, his speed his power his height he's got all the advantages uh, I came back uh, early April for another ten ten days and uh, once again he was getting better and better and then uh, like. Well, I would say probably three months ago is when I when I came and I stayed here all, all three months. Uh, you know, I've been here for you know cl maybe close to four months already since since uh, since the first time that I came just for ten days, and uh, you know every every time every time he says uh, he talks about the fight, he's very positive about himself. You know, and uh, I do believe that that was the main thing. You know, he, he has to believe in himself. Mm -hmm. He has to know that he's got everything that it, that. That it takes to to beat Usyk, you know. We're not saying Usyk is an easy fighter. No, he's very, very uh, difficult, very awkward, uh, smart inside the ring. You know, he trained in my gym for for a while when I was in Oxnard, so I seen his trainings, and he trains hard. He's always gonna be in great shape. He's uh, he's fun person to be around, actually. But uh, but I think Anthony Anthony has the height, the 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 reach, the weight. People are saying that he's, that Usyk is going to be heavy t this time, so I really don't know. But we have the weight, the height, the power. Anthony hits unbelievably hard, man, mm -hmm. and he's got the reach also. So I think we take advantage of that. If we take those those things, uh, we consider those things and work on them. And with a mind, with a right mindset, I think Anthony has what it takes to win, you know. And uh, and that's what we train for, you know. Early early in camp, I I told Anthony, you know, because it's not just me; it's also Angel, Angel Fernandez, you know. And we told. Uh, we told uh, we told Anthony, look Anthony, you know you might you might not like us during training camps. So we're gonna push you to do to do everything we want you to do. You there, there's gonna be days that you're gonna com complain about us. And yeah, those days have, have been there where, oh you guys don't don't give me credit for things that I do right. Well that's that's good because we want you to do more. Mm -hmm. But after the fight, you're gonna like us. You're gonna thank us. Mm -hmm. I mean you you kind of maybe probably answered this there. Uh, you mentioned mindset. Uh, a lot of fight, your boxing's ruthless, isn't it? You're as good as your last fight. People are quick exactly. to write you off, but you don't become a bad fighter overnight. Has kind of reinstalling that self-belief. Spikes can lose their mojo, can't they? It's kind of getting him, reinstalling that self-belief, that confidence, reminding him of who he is and what he's accomplished and what he can do, and that there are still areas that he can improve on. Has that been the main focus? You know what, we, uh, throughout the, the last four months that we've been together, that's what we just, got to keep reminding him because we've had some bad days too you know we've had so, those days where where he might say something that is not what we want to hear mm -hmm. but then we just have to change that around you know this last this last few days this week we i told him look i think you're going to be right at the right moment you know with the way training went uh sparring partners that we had and your mindset uh 
you know, not, not only myself, but all the guys that are around them, they've been saying that, the, you know, these last couple of days, everything's, you know, I know what I got to do. I know how hard I trained. I know what I did in the gym. I know I'm going to go out and knock them out. So that's really the right, the right uh, mentality that he needs to have. And, uh, you, you know, we got three, four days left to, to continue with that, you know, keep giving them that, that, that positive uh, vibes. And because uh, the whole team has it, you know, we, we're all on the same page. Everybody, you know, we talked about it with, with the team to just tell them nothing but positive things. You know, myself, Angel Fernandez, you know, we're, we're on the same page. We, throughout training camp, we always, we never disagreed on anything. Mm -hmm. You know, we teamed up very well. And, uh, and you know, the, the job was done. You know, now we just got to wait for Saturday. You mentioned there that when you met with Anthony, obviously he's coming off a loss and you saw it as a challenge and, and you've, you've reinvented other fighters and had great success, Madonna, for example. When you met with Anthony and you, you, you spoke, what, what were your first impressions of him? You know what, uh, like I said, in Fresno, you know, we all sat on the table and, uh, and, and he was very positive about, about what he wanted to do, what he wanted to learn. And uh, he mentioned, you know, I know I need to be more aggressive. I know I need to be uh, a little more of, of, of the, the guy that going out there looking for, for, for the fight to hurt your opponent, I said, well, that's perfect because that's, that's, that's what everybody knows you need and, uh, and you got to accept it, you know, he's got to accept it. So I don't think it was even that hard to, mm -hmm. to adapt because, you know, we didn't try to change something that he's never done before or something that he can't do because earlier in his career, he was that, that he had that, that mentality, you know. I think it was just his last uh, fight with Usyk that, you know, his, his frustration was that, that Usyk is lefty, very awkward with his movements. So he kind of felt like he needed something new. Mm -hmm. But uh, skills, talent, you know, talent, his, you know, power, he already has it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you see him shadow box, you see him do the mids, you see him do heavy back. I think this guy's talent-wise, he's the best heavyweight out there. Mm -hmm. You know, he, mm -hmm. talent-wise, he's the best heavyweight out there. But, you know, I, all of it has got to be, you know, you got to know that you want it in, in your head and in your heart. And that's all that, that's all that was uh, missing. I think uh, with, with that, in this fight coming up, he's got all the tools to win. We've seen lots of you over the years, different interviews, seen you at fights, around fight week, et cetera. And you always struck me as a guy that doesn't take life too seriously, that yeah, you, you, it's good to have a joke and it's, boxing's tough enough as it is. We have to laugh and enjoy the journey. Um, as you, do you find that your and AJ's personalities have clicked? Well, you know what, uh, as, as a trainer, uh, as a trainer and, and fighter, I think so, you know. I, I learned uh, from, from previous fighters early in, you know, when I started training fighters, uh, I started training a couple fighters in, in 2002, after I had retired. And those two were, were two of my best friends. So we were friends. So we were, not only were we trained, we would also hang out. Uh, then I brought in, uh, in 2004, I brought in Brandon Rios, who also liked to hang out. And I was a lot younger, so, so we hanged out. I learned that I'm not supposed to mix that up with my fighters, you know, so, so I came to camp to be the trainer and uh, get Anthony's respect mm -hmm. uh, as a trainer, but I don't want to be his friend either. Because mm -hmm. when, when you become friends, then you have that confidence to, to maybe not want to do as hard or uh, he's going to give me the day off because, I, because I'm, I'm, we're friends. So I learned that you know, earlier in my career as a trainer, not to be friends with my fighters. I, I got to, they got to know that I come to the gym to give them instructions, they got to do the work, and then you got to keep that I level of respect. Yes, we have to, uh, and that's one thing that I, I, you know, I learned from my dad. You know, my dad, my, when he seen that that I started becoming friends with with Brandon Rios, uh, you know, especially you know, because we went out a lot I, when on weekends when he had no fights coming, we would go out, you know, stuff like that. And my dad said, "Don't do that because they're gonna lose respect for you. They're gonna they're gonna get too confident, too comfortable with you to a point where." Where you're not going to be the trainer anymore. You're going to be their friend. So that's one thing that uh, you know I came in not to be Anthony's fr friend. I told him you you're not, you might not like us. And there's been times where he where he's not happy with us. Uh, but uh, but I, I don't care. You know I want him to win. I want him to win. And and uh, and after the, you know Sunday morning after the fight, he's gonna he's gonna be happy because you know the results were there. We're nearly there now. Not not long ago. How excited are you? And also. 
what would it mean to you personally for AJ to get the win? You know what, it, it would be, you know, I've had great wins, but this would be the best win of my career as a trainer. You know, just the fact that, that you know, I'm, I'm training a, a former heavyweight champion of the world, is, uh, that's already a big accomplishment. But winning the title, you know, very few, very few trainers can say that they trained a heavyweight champ, uh, fighter to become champion of the world. And that's one thing that, uh, that I, I was always uh, looking forward to one day, you know. I've trained a few heavyweights, uh, but never to a championship level, you know. And, uh, and you know, yes, I've tr most of my champions have all been maybe from welterweight uh, and under. But, uh, but you know, I, there was a lot of uh, talk about, oh, he's never worked with any heavyweights. He's never really been involved with heavyweights. Well, I don't think there's much of a difference if the fighter is, is listening and if the fighter believes in his trainer and, and follows instructions, there's no, there's no difference. You know, fighters have to train hard anyways. They have to be in shape to go in their 12 rounds. So if, if there's no difference from a welterweight, which I trained, uh, you know, I've been involved in the welterweight fights, middleweight fights. If, if, there's, if there's a big difference from that to heavyweight, so why wouldn't, why wouldn't it be a big difference from, from welterweights to junior flyweights, mm -hmm. which I've also worked with. So, you know, you, you got to know how, how to train each fighter for what they need to work on. So it's not like, oh, because he's a heavyweight, we need to train him only two days a week. Or no, the guys have to train four or five days a week at least. You know, just like, just like my, my featherweights in my gym, you know, they, at least five days a week they got to train. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we just have to know, obviously, the sparring has to be different, sparring partners, the, the way we do the training for the game plan. Obviously, yeah, all that changes, but uh, to me, it was, it was pretty, pretty uh, can't say e easy, because you know, it's not easy working with a, uh, a person that big and, and uh, being our first time together. But uh, but it was just like any, 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 other, any one of my other fighters. You know, that, that's the way I took it, and, uh, and it hasn't been hard. The fact that a lot of people have written him off from the last fight and that he's the underdog going into this fight, I'm assuming that'll make it a lot more special to get the win on Saturday night. You know what, uh, that's, that's, what uh, that's, that's, that's what I love most about boxing, that with one loss, the fans, the people, the media, right away they, they, they write you off. You know, they don't, they don't, you know, they don't see that Anthony you know, started boxing at 18, went to the Olympics with not so many years of experience, still won a gold medal. He's already a, a two-time heavyweight champion of the world. And you know, you get a bad performance, you get a, a loss and, and everybody writes you off. Oh, it's either this, it's that. So everybody has a, a, an opinion, everybody, everybody's an expert in boxing. And, and you know, from what, what you see, a lot of boxing people did tell me, you know what, you're gonna have to work hard because it looks like, you know, his mind, his heart is not, is not there. But uh, those are the challenges that, that a trainer loves, you know, uh, especially a, a trainer that, that, that still has passion for it. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not a trainer that, uh, that, uh, that's going to come here just to, to enjoy a nice vacation in a beautiful place, uh, a different country, and, and get paid. No, you know, that, that's not what, that's, you know, I like to win. And uh, a, a win I know will be huge for my career as a trainer too. Even though everything I've accomplished, this this will probably be the biggest win. So I I, I need it too. You know, it's not not just they, not, not just Anthony. I think myself. You know, uh, Angel Fernandez. You know, wants this win. We want it so bad that uh, that we work very hard to to make it happen. Can we get a prediction? You know what? These last few days, I've, I've been very positive from what I've been hearing from AJ, mm -hmm. and not, 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 not necessarily to me, but to everybody around camp. You know, we're having breakfast together or lunch together, and you know, they tell me what he's, what he's been saying, what he's been talking uh, about, and, and they, the only thing in his mind is he's gonna win by knockout. Mm -hmm. And I believe, he, I believe he's got, you know, can he win by decision? Yes, I, 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 I know that he could also win by decision because if he controls the fight, you know, with, with his long punches, using a lot of jabs, and, 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 and even though we want him to back him up, but, but if he just uses that, that reach and that half distance where he's controlling the fight, he could easily win a decision too. But does he have the power? Does he have the strength? Has, has, uh, 
has uh, was it been dropped before? Yes. Has he been dropped? You know, does he like body shots? Probably not, because he's been dropped a couple a few times with body shots. So can he knock him out? I think so. And 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 that that's what we're going for. I think I think uh, Anthony knows it himself, and uh, and myself and Angel Fernandez that we're gonna we're gonna push him to go for the knockout. And if he does get the win, I take it you're going to be clacking up a lot of air miles. <laughs> this is going to be your only rodeo. You're going to be back in the UK working you, you again. You know what? Uh, it was it wasn't easy because leaving my family, you know, was hard. I, I you know, I told my family, "What's well, this going to be? Three months." But then from July 23rd, it moved to Aug mm. to August to August 20th, so one more month. So so you know, four months. I said, nah, it'll, buy, it'll go by quick, but a lot of things happen in, in, uh, in four months. You know, a lot of my fighters have been fighting and they're still, you know, obviously they, they, they need me there too. But, you know, that, that's the, the worst, the, the least thing I could worry about. You know, my, my daughter graduated high school and I wasn't there. You know, one of my good friends, uh, a very close friend of ours, lost his brother and we weren't there to support him and, you know, show him, show him the love that, that, uh, that, that, you know, that they wanted to see from, from people close to them. You know, so things like that, uh, think, you know, but it, it's life, you know, it's, it's life. Uh, we know that it's just the way it is. My daughter was very, very uh, understanding. Uh, I told her, me, I can't be in your, in your graduation, but I promise you, I'll, you know, I'll do whatever you want. You know, when I come back, she wants a trip to Europe. Me and my wife, we're gonna bring her to, to, uh, to London, Paris, and, uh, and and she wants to go to uh, Barcelona. So three different uh, cities that we're gonna, t uh, I think sometime in November. Okay. So, you know, so, you know, those are things that uh, I have to make up, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, graduation is big, especially, you know, graduate, graduating high school, and I wasn't there, but, you know, they understand, they understand, and uh, everybody's supporting me, and they are gonna be happy.